All right, well, hopefully everybody can hear me. Okay, why is that? That was weird. All right, so unfortunately, we're still at the point where I'm going to have to like semi watch off to the side here. Actually, let me see if I can move this monitor. If I can move this over without messing things up. Sorry for shaking all of you. Let's try this. Hey, there we go. Now I can look as if I'm almost actually looking at the camera. If I move it around a little bit. So we'll get this figured out a little bit more um, as we get into doing this on a regular basis. We used to do it about every two weeks so that you guys could pop in and ask questions. So who knows? We'll see what happens from there. Yes, I know I'm a minute late. Thank you very much. I'm glad everybody's being so helpful. <laughs> all right. So we got everything all set. and. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm ready for some chatting. How's it going? Yeah, that's kind of the point here, guys. <laughs> it would be awesome. Yeah, my roommate's sitting here giving me some shit about me snorting in the last live stream while I was trying to be able to go and talk with you guys. Unfortunately, where I'm at right now is just filled with a bunch of dust and constantly having to clean my nose out and everything. It is what it is, but we're doing pretty good now. Hey, thank you, Jesse, for kicking in, saying whether the audio and the video was good. Um, I did change the lighting around a little bit so that hopefully we're actually kicking up and... We should be okay. All right, let me see. Any updates from yesterday? Uh, I got the whole front of the shop cleaned out. I got most of it moved around at this point. Unfortunately, I've been discovering that there's more stuff missing than I thought that there was originally. There's a bunch of hand tools, a bunch of lifetime guarantee wrenches are missing. I found another $100 or so worth of stuff that's gone right now. Um, it's all replaceable at this point. I can start over. I mean, I literally started from scratch with like eight years ago with nothing but hand tools. So um, it is what it is. We're just going to keep going. Um, at this point, I had to go and get a cat door installed for Fuzz so that she could get in and out of the garage on a regular basis and stop having to open up the garage door for her and stuff. And that took precedent today and got a bunch of other stuff done. You got your bunny. No, actually I haven't gotten the stupid bunny. Um, I A, can't seem to figure out where the bunny is living. I B, only see the bunny every once in a while. And C, the bunny won't let me get within about 15 feet of the stupid thing. So at this point, I'm just going to keep feeding it in the same spot that apparently somebody was feeding it. I'm pretty sure that my neighbor, while I was gone and out of the house and while the house was abandoned, was actually coming up and feeding the cats and stuff. Uh, there's a spot where somebody was definitely piling food during the time when the house was vacant. But yeah, so yeah, I don't know what to do about the stupid rabbit. <laughs> I haven't had a rabbit since I was a kid. I actually used to have a rabbit called Spot, and the uh, the thing would attack dogs and actually ended up costing my dad a $350 vet bill when I was a teenager because he ripped half of the nose off of my dad's best friend's dog when we were supposedly babysitting it. Uh, not a good way to babysit a dog, having your rabbit decide to tear it to shreds. But... Watching from North Wales in the UK. Hey, hey, you're probably going to be not quite the farthest away for the people that join, but you're still pretty far. We've actually had Australia come in a couple of times. Apparently, there's a version of the Craftsman that's actually sold in Australia, and some of the guys have found my videos and ended up joining these live chats, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, 
Also, comes to find come to find out, apparently in the Virginia Islands, they actually sell um, LT one thousands and LT two thousand Craftsmen, and a lot of the guys running boatyards and stuff actually hop them up in order to haul sailboats and stuff around the little small stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's good to see that people from all around are joining. Uh, we end up with Belgium quite often, also. When is the tractor video is going to start back up? Uh, goal is going to go and be to get the uh, mud wizard and the gas powered power wheel hauled in. But the first priority at this point, because somebody definitely messed with my plow truck, I found, well, let's just say somebody wanted to make sure I couldn't plow the driveway. We'll word it that way politely. Um, <clears throat> high quality people do some pretty low quality stuff. And the plow truck's not going to get up and running anytime soon, so we're going to have to get something going. So the snowblower is on, on for most likely Friday morning, and then because I've got a bunch of stuff going on Thursday in my personal life and stuff. So on Friday, we're going to be working on getting the snowblower up and running. Then we're going to be working on getting at least one of the two MTD style chassis that are in front of the garage up and running. From there, I can get the MTD snowblower. Um, and that way we can get things going and at least be able to go and clean it out. Uh, let me see. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. You guys are going to flood me. Let me r roll back through, see if there's anything up here. Um... The worst thing about a theft is inconvenient. Yeah, you have no idea, man. Um, I I had to spend today just utterly cleaning everything because there is no more giant of a frustration than every time you go to reach for something, it's not where it's supposed to be. Um, so I've been recataloging the shop, trying to figure out what's there. Luckily, when I was homeless, I ended up buying a Duralast set at AutoZone and so I have a bunch of sockets. I have a bunch of wrenches and stuff. I'm going to end up working from that socket set while I, uh, from that Duralast mechanic set while I'm working up through and rebuilding the shop. And then eventually that Duralast set will stay in my truck while I go on service and get machines and stuff. All right, let's see. All right, let's see where you guys are going. How's John adjusting to being back home? He's doing amazing. Um, my roommate, Jesse went out of her way to work on setting him up a room and getting everything all organized and stuff. Meanwhile, I worked on some of the more uh, grungy parts. Well, where is grungy? Um, it's really hard to go and find polite terms to, to describe the leftovers of high quality people, I tell you. Um, but anyways, so she worked on cleaning up. John's got his own dedicated room. John is a junkyard dog. He loves investigating stuff. He loves building stuff out of things that are just random and things like that. So <laughs> in all honesty, actually watching him in his seven-year-old version of, hey, this is cool, is one of the most heartwarming and massive motivations for me. Um, it's, it's just crazy to look at the world through a seven-year-old's eyes. He doesn't see the grunge. He doesn't see the destruction. All he sees is a pile and goes, oh, look at this. This is cute. I can make this out of this. And it that it just, it's heartwarming. You got to keep watching it and you got to keep working with it. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Kentucky here, Virginia here. Hey, we're kicking it all through the states. Hi from... I'm going to butcher this one. Hi from Sint Martin. Martin? I don't know. Is that Spanish? Somebody tell me. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Old school repair shop, I would look into cameras to put up because you never know if they might come back. Oh, that's already in the works. No worries there, bud. All right, so 
Um, I'm going to get scrolling down through, and I'm sorry. Let's see if we can go and catch some of you guys and your questions. What happened to all of the chickens and the turkeys you used to have? Did they take them? Yeah, actually, during the time that I ended up getting removed from the house, originally there were 30 plus chickens out there and turkeys and all kinds of other stuff. I have no idea what happened to any of them. Um, I will tell you that there is a uh, boneyard left by high quality people that I have had to light on fire and get rid of. And that's, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it. It's really amazing to me that they got away with what they did. Hello from South Carolina. There we go. Hello from Poland. Hey, see, I knew we'd get Poland or Belgium in here. There usually is at least one or two of you guys. Hey, who, the Poland person, can you post up what, why it is you ended up finding my channel? I know why the Belgium guys show up, and I know why a bunch of the others. Did you find it because of a certain tractor I worked on or something? Um, finally managed to catch one of your live chats from Boise, Idaho area. Glad to hear things are slowly moving forward. Good to hear about John. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. It, we're doing good. Everything's pulling together. We're kicking it up, and we're doing... Hey, we're doing good. Um, YouTube, YouTube is as much as I'm so pissed off and irritated about the whole comment thing is actually doing me quite nicely. Um, you guys, whenever you go through and you buy something through those Amazon Associates links, I make a buck or two. Um, you know, <laughs> ironically, the stolen welder. A lot of you, a lot of you ended up going back for some reason and looking up that hundred and thirty dollar welder in my old videos, and um, you ended up looking it up and I saw the kick up in my Amazon associate stuff. You know, anytime one of you guys buys one of those welders through that Amazon associate link, I actually make 10 bucks. Um, that's the way it works with those links and stuff like that. So thanks a lot for checking in on those. And that's the reason why I include them. I don't include them unless it's something I actually use myself, but I also include it for the fact that it kicks me back something. So thank you very much for taking the time when you go back and order through one of those links. It really does make a difference in my life. Um, you guys basically ended up buying me all of my gas money that way last month. What's going to happen with the cabin? Let's touch on that topic. The answer is I'm going to be doing a dedicated video. I'm going to actually be working on that really soon. And I'll tell you what's going on with the cabin at that point. Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a subject I need to word correctly because of how the cabin is involved in my life. And I'll get back to you and explain that pretty soon in a video. Okay. Um, so <laughs> yes, have fun at work. Thank you. <laughs> Ella. <laughs> um, so we, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll be touching on the cabin soon. There's a lot going on with that, and it's it's an in-the-works kind of project right now. So we'll get back to that, and we'll bring it back up. Um, no, the cabin is not going to be abandoned, just to hit that comment right off the bat, straight on the top of the head. Okay, let's scroll up here. I see a couple of interesting comments going on. Um all right, let's see what you guys got going on here. When are you mud tractor going? I have two I'm bringing when I move to Arkansas. So the problem here in the state of Maine and the reason why I don't use, I usually do mud mower builds during the winter time and then I actually run stuff during the summer is that here in the winter time, they actually, they actually cut you off from, excuse me, it's got burps in it. Um, they actually cut you off from using most of the ATV trails around here. So even if I got Mud Wizard back up and running, I still can't trail ride it until spring when they release everything. So that's what's going on as far as that's concerned. Yes, I can toy with it around the property. And yes, I can toy with it a couple other locations. But as far as actual riding, I've got to wait till spring opens up. Uh, we have found four locations at this point that will allow me to go ride. 
and I'm going to be trying to get a hold of some other people to go riding. Um, we'll see where that goes. What I'll probably do is post an actual group invite on the Facebook group, and we'll see if we can actually get some people showing up. Okay. Right. All right, let's see if we can catch up on where we're going here. So what did they do? So what did they do to my plow truck? Well, yeah, let's just say that it didn't have any smashed off vacuum lines when I left. It definitely didn't have a black top battery in it. It had a Duralast Gold that was brand spanking new. And it definitely didn't have water poured in the top of the distributor in order to turn the distributor into a block of ice. It's really, really a good thing that before I went to start it, I noticed that the distributor cap for some reason wasn't quite on the way it should have been. The real reality is I'm not getting the truck started anytime soon because if that's what I found just popping the hood open, then God knows what else was done to it. Um, they knew... They knew when I was leaving that I in, had intended to rebuild the truck to put it back on the road. And I got a feeling that's where the vendettful actions ended up coming from. But whatever. I'll get it back up and running. That's no big deal. <clears throat> Play, okay, so um, somebody just kicked up here says that one of the things that they liked the most was me playing in the edge of the pond with the mud mower. I've actually got a bunch of ideas for an add-on to make a mud mower amphibious. Um, if you guys think an amphibious mud mower would be a good idea. Now, I'm, I'm not talking like something directly mounted. I mean like drive in and have some deployment idea that makes it so that you can be able to drive it across the water. If you guys think that's cool and not absolutely stupid, throw me a couple of comments and we'll see whether I can actually pull it off. It's just another side note thing that I was thinking of. Uh, let's see, as far as the mud track is concerned, yes, I did originally have a mud track down the back side of the uh, the lower area of my yard, and that mud track is going to go back in. Um, I intend to break that out in the spring. I intend to totally make sure that it stays muddy and useful, and eventually I'm hoping to be able to invite people directly to the house and be able to go and just test drive and compare machines and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe do a couple of pond crossings, maybe do a mud run area, maybe build some sort of slightly off-road testing area and stuff like that out behind where the chicken coop is. Um, my other thing that I always wanted to do was I wanted to build a track that does the entire perimeter of the property so that you'd have a straightaway, you'd have a mud spot, you'd have a flex area, you'd have an obstacle area and see if you can do the entire track because it's a two and a half acre plot so you've got you've got 250 plus feet down either side plus 300 feet the other direction. So you literally could build what would essentially be uh, basically one mile for every three and a half laps, three four laps type track around the whole property was one of my goals. Okay, let's scroll down through. Let's see what we got going. Christmas break is almost here. Happy early Christmas, peeps. <laughs> yes, Christmas break is almost here. I can't wait. Um, it'll be it'll be fun to go and have John around more than he usually is for a little while and be able to do some stuff. I'm really hoping to have some things fired up for him for Christmas break so that he can horse around and play. And the funny thing about the gas-powered power wheel is I actually had ordered some parts in order to upgrade it, in order to get it a little bit faster, because that was the number one complaint you guys gave me, was that it just wasn't quite fast enough. 
So I'd like to go and get it just a little bit faster if we can, and then go from there. Let's see. Taste your fuel for sugar. Might need to actually wash out your tank. Well, let me put it to you this way. I don't think gasoline is supposed to smell like pine salt. Yeah. Twelve volt compressor and pontoon tubes for an amphibious tractor. You know that's actually not a bad idea. That was not at all where I was going with that, but it, that's a good idea. Might be a little slow and a little noisy, but that's a really good idea. I completely sang and submerged my Sears Suburban in a pond last year. Oh my God, do you guys remember the original crossing that I did with uh, Maine Mudmore when I ended up sinking him and I drove out in first gear using nothing but the starter? That was epic. I, I still, to this day, anytime anybody wants to argue about whether the stock clutch on a Craftsman is strong enough, I send them that video. Like, really? That clutch held underneath the water using Pix belts, full Kevlar belts, and drove out with nothing but a starter. I mean, it, stock Craftsman clutches are just phenomenal. There's no reason you need to change anything else. The only thing you occasionally have to do with a stock Craftsman clutch is move the pin that it uses back a little bit in order to be able to put in like a larger seven inch pulley on the drive for the motor but yeah it's they work amazing was there any problem with the oil furnaces the one in the garage was fine the one in the house has been run severely out of oil and the pump seems to actually be stuck i'm going to have to go and pull it apart and i'm going to have to rebuild the pump it's not uncommon, unfortunately, um, when you run them low on oil and then you decide to continuously hit the restart button, it eventually ends up seizing and rotting out the, uh, wearing out the pump. So I'm going to bet that's probably what happened. I'll end up fixing that eventually. That's not worth trying to make any video on, but I'll end up fixing it. Why do you always disable comments on your videos? Okay, would anybody else like to answer this? I did not disable the video comments. That's YouTube and their stupid overprotection, pedophile, whatever dumb stuff. And long story short is, I didn't do it. I love having the comments. That's the reason why it is most of the time when I post a video now, I actually also post a photo in the community section so you guys can comment back on it. And the reason being is because I'm now up to the 13th email that I have sent YouTube about how moronic this situation is. <clears throat> Were you able to find another job after taking care of your relative? Actually, I'm going to do I'm going to do a video on how I survived the last few months in a couple of weeks to a month or so after I get a few more things sorted. There's some stuff in the background that I just don't feel like talking about just yet until it's more finalized. But I will talk about that more. I just can't right now. All right. Let me see. Okay, let's see if we can come back down through here. Do you have a job? My job is YouTube, my job is rebuilding stuff, my job is Amazon beta testing projects, uh, products, and my job is being a dad and taking care of the house and anything else that I can manage to go and get a hold of, fix, and flip. That's my job. Um, I like to go and tell people I'm 36, retired, and I do whatever the heck I want to. What happened to your homemade fish tanks? Well, actually, during the time I was dealing with high-quality people, my fish ended up with a major 
um, infection, and then I was dealing with other situations caused by high quality people, and I couldn't take care of it fast enough, and JoJo ended up dying. So I ended up selling the fish tank off to another person with another Asian red tail catfish that needed it as a grow out tank. And I, I sold it for a bargain and a song just so that they'd be able to get their fish out of a 55 gallon tank. And that's where it ended up. The problem is my water here is too acidic for raising tropical fish. So I constantly was running into maintenance issues with the tanks. And so eventually, if I end up living somewhere else in the future, rather when I end up living somewhere else in the future, because I don't intend to stay here, um, when I end up living somewhere else in the future, I'm going to have the water fully tested. And if it's up to par, I might decide to go back to having the large catfish again. Right. What pin are you talking about moving on a craftsman clutch to get a bigger pulley on? Okay, so <clears throat> all right, so on a craftsman clutch, okay, we're gonna use my phone as the clutch. And your craftsman clutch has an arm and it looks like this. There's a pivot pin that's in the center of that arm. So you've got a pulley right here where this hand is and your spring tensioner is up here. So that pivot pin is what you move down the body to be able to get the pulley that's right here away from your drive motor, which is up here. So when this comes up, it ends up releasing. And when it comes down, it tensions it. and if you take that and you move that pin downwards, you can fit a bigger drive pulley up above it. And that's basically the one major mod that they need is just moving that pin. And whether you whether you just drill through and put a new one in or whether you cut it off and then re-weld it, either one works. All right, let's see. Can you recall any past near-death experiences? Uh, actually, believe it or not, I've had quite a few um, interesting experiences that were near-death. Actually, technically, since the age of 13, I'm not really supposed to walk. I was in a wrestling accident, and I, um, I got asked about this the other day, so I'll tell you this story. So I was a top wrestler when I was in eighth grade. And I actually had gone into states with such a high rank and such a high point number that in my third, I think it was, match, I ended up getting put in an illegal hold, which popped two vertebrae out of the bottom of my neck and ended up causing me to go entirely numb and pelagic all the way from the neck down. I could not move my hands. I could not move. Um, anything. I could just barely breathe. I could not feel anything in either hands or my feet. I was unable to move. And um, the guy counted me out, did the count of 10, called it. And the guy that was holding me, if you do wrestling now, it's actually illegal to do a certain hold where you end up with a person's head here them wrap behind your back and their knees here and if you pull and the reason for that is because of what happened to me you can pop these two vertebrae right out of the neck and you can kill the person right there instantly pop done um because your elbow as it pulls actually turns their neck in and if he had to turn me just about two more inches i would have been dead on the wrestling mat um so anyways he dropped me and they walked off. Everybody in the whole place walked off. They just kept going. And at, <laughs> all of a sudden, my coach comes running out onto the mat. And it, 
Neil, are you okay? Neil, are you okay? And I could just barely talk. Like I could talk, but I could just barely breathe. And I told him, no, no coach. I'm, I can't move. So they put me onto a strap, uh, onto a backboard and they ended up loading me into an ambulance. Now, the irony of this is that just as, just as I get loaded into the ambulance is actually when my father shows up to the wrestling meet in order to get rushed out in order to catch me in his Monte Carlo. He had a 1983 SS Monte Carlo with T-tops and uh, 355 with a pour barrel. So he, uh, he got into his car raced after the ambulance to catch the ambulance to follow me to the hospital to come into the ER. They actually left me strapped to that backboard and had to come in in order to go and do tingle tests. And it's one of only about three times I've ever seen my father cry in my entire life. And so, um, so when they were there, they actually came in and they did that whole wrap you with the hammer and all that other kind of stuff. And eventually I started to actually get the tingling back into my feet. I ended up being able to move my big toe about three hours later and stuff like that. And what they ended up coming to the conclusion was when that guy released me because he won the match, it actually slammed me back onto the mat and it drove my two vertebrae back in. And it's the only reason I'm alive but I still actually have nerve damage down my entire right hand side of my body from it. I can't feel as much pain in my right hand as most people do. I have issues with feeling heat in my hand and stuff like that. Um, I've actually been known to go and hold on to objects and have smoke coming off of my hand before I realize that, hey, by the way, I'm burning myself. It's also part of the reason why I weld with no welding gloves or anything like that. The heat never bothers me. But yeah, I'm not supposed to walk. I still, to this day, if I get hit in the back of the neck, I have permanent nerve damage. And if I get hit in the back of the neck, I actually go limp from the neck down until everything ends up, um, until everything ends up shrinking back down. And it's not fun, but every day I keep walking and every day I keep telling the doctors that they can suck on the number one finger in the middle of my hand. But anyways, hey, whatever works. Yeah. Will the hydro build get back up and running? I'm actually wanting to bring back the hydro build. Uh, today, while I was cleaning out the garage, I actually found the spare hydro that I pulled in order to be able to start working on the hydro build before all of this fun stuff happened. So the hydro build will come back. It's not a priority right now. I need Mud Wizard up and running because I need to be able to go get wood for my um, wood stove. There we go. Wood goes in a wood stove. I just made a video on that, didn't I? Um, so I need to be able to go and get Mud Wizard up and running so that I can be able to go haul wood off of the corner of the property so that I can be able to heat the shop up. Um, so that's got that's the reason why I need Mud Wizard up and running is not to be able to go romping, not to be able to have fun. I need the bugger to work. Um, so that's where that's coming from. That's one thing about me. I don't just build the mud mowers in order to go and go play with. I build them to work and I put them to work. The original main mud mower hauled out of, out of the woods over almost 10 cord worth of wood during the summers that it was available. So I don't, I don't just mess around. I put them to work. All right, let's see if we can catch up here. Did you say in a video it's not okay to feed catfish on gold, only goldfish? Yes. So goldfish actually have a active in, uh, an active chemical in them that can build up in a regular fish that can cause them to go and have kidney and liver failure. So consider goldfish kind of like your night on the town drinking. It's okay every once in a while to go out and have a good night drinking. It's not okay to be an alcoholic like I used to be. Alcoholic, eating too many goldfish, 
you get the idea. Going out on the town, having a drink every once in a while, okay. Being alcoholic, not okay. So that's the thing on goldfish. It's not that they can eat goldfish. And actually, goldfish um, done right are actually high in a lot of fat, which can really actually help your fish. But it's the other stuff that's there. It's no different than how they talk about how sometimes uh, certain wines and vodkas and things like that are good for your health. But having too much and being an alcoholic is not. That's the point of goldfish. Oh, I had to break out the ginger ale. Okay. Okay. My plan is to make a YouTube channel and make mud mowers too. Hey, have at. Um, when I first started, there were only about seven of us. And I think there's probably at least over 100 mud mower channels at this point. Will you be doing an autopsy video on the plow truck? I might, but the thing is, I'm not going to bother trying to work on the plow truck until spring when it warms up. So, yes, I probably will. Yes, I probably will go in and work on it and take you guys along for the ride, but it's not going to be a priority for a while. Apparently, some people don't get the high-quality people sarcasm. Sarcasm. The answer to the question is sarcasm. Moving on. You mentioned a newer project in the other video. Holy cow, we just cracked 100 people watching. Oh, no, 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 somebody went away. Come back. I want to crack 100 people. Oh, you're evil. That actually, I think that might have been the first time I've ever seen that actually make it over 100. That was awesome. Yes, 100 people. Okay, anyways, sorry, can't help it. I'm in a good mood. I'm making progress. Everything's coming up. Um, hey, look, we got 101 Dalmatians here now. Um, everything's coming up great. I'm doing, I'm doing really good now. Uh, let's see. Mention a project in the other video. Would it happen to be another ranger? It would happen to be a something. <laughs> We're going to get into that more. Um, I'm actually waiting for the title on it to show up because the title's actually kind of in a, a weird limbo right now. So if the title shows up, it'll be a project in itself. If the title doesn't manage to show up by the time late spring happens, it's going to be used for a project. I'll explain that more in a little bit. How's the house cleaning going? It is a long, long process. Actually, the problem is, is I have to clean two houses. I actually have to clean what they moved out of, and I have to go and clean where my dad was living. So it's a two-part process of not fun. All right, let's see here. Let's catch up. What kind of wagon do you tow with wood? I tow an old 1990 style Craftsman tr um, dump cart. Back in the 90s, the dump carts were actually designed with full three quarter inch axles and everything. They're a lot stronger than the newer ones. I always tell everybody to keep your eyes out for one of the older 90s style ones. And it's really easy to notice the 90s style ones because on the bottom of those Craftsman wagons, there's a V that comes down for the uh, that comes down for the axle. So the axle is going this way, and you got the V coming down. The difference is on a '90s one, where that V comes down, it's made out of a solid punch plate, and that V goes the whole entire width of the cart. The newer ones, it's a V on either end with an area in between where the axle isn't supported. 
and they just plain can't take the weight. The older style one where it comes down and it's a solid plate all the way across, those hold the weight a lot better. They're just unkillable. They're totally worth it. I bedlinered mine. I actually need to redo it, but the original bedliner Dura, uh, Duralast bedliner coating that I put on it lasted for five years, I think, and it was totally worth it. Um, if you get one of those Craftsman trailers, the very first thing I tell everybody is scuff it, bedliner it. You'll never regret it. Totally worth the 20 bucks. Let's see. How do you think you'll start John's monster? John's monster? I'm assuming you mean the gas-powered power wheel. I don't know. I got to tear into it. I mean, I've found so many different things that were messed with that who knows what it's going to be when I find that. The good news is, is I actually have a spare carburetor for that, and I have spare parts for just about everything on that motor. So... I'm sure I can get something up and running. The question is going to be what's going on with it. And you never know. Maybe I'll luck out and maybe it's just a clogged carb and I'll clean it out and it'll fire back up. We'll see. Build a carport for all the tractors. Actually, the last live stream test, when we were doing the live stream test, there was, there was some kick up and conversation about off-grid and things like that. And I'm debating the idea of maybe something like a 12 by 20 pole barn shed idea, only deliberately building it as, as off-grid as possible to be able to actively work in. It's kind of a stretch, but a lot of you have gotten a hold of me and said that you have a shed that's out back away from the house or something like that. And you wanted to see whether you could run a welder out there, whether you could do certain other things. And that really intrigued me. And I want to see whether it's actually doable. So we might actually pursue that, not this year, but going into future years. I actually really like that idea and want to pursue it further. The other thing is, I would love to be able to get into a renewable energy source for being able to run my welder. Because running my welder is the number one way that I crank myself up an electrical bill. That if I could just have a renewable energy source, it would be worth killing that off of my electrical bill. Hoping for a speedy cleanup. No such luck here, bud. Um, I'm on my seventh 55-gallon... Uh, bag of trash and I'm still just skimming the surface of what I'm going to have to haul. Most likely a house is going to require a dumpster of some sort. Do you got plans for a cab for your snow removal tractor? I've debated a couple of different ways to go and build a cab. Right now it's just perfecting that snow blower that I built first or getting one of the um, the actual MTD snowblower is up and running. It would be cool to see a mud golf cart. It really doesn't work out all that well. There's a lot of guys that have tried, and it just, it is what it is. Without swapping the drivetrain for something extreme, it, they just don't work. All right, let's see. How many tractors do you have? Okay, let's qualify a tractor as having both the transaxle and the motor and the frame. Okay, so it's got to be a frame with a transaxle and it's got to have a motor on it to qualify as a lawn tractor. The answer would be, there's a, let's see, there's an LT2000 underneath the front porch. There's Mud Wizard. There is, there's a Husqvarna Hydro out front. There's a GT6000 Hydro out front. There's a Bolens that's off in the pucker brush. There's a 
Sears Suburban that's off in the pucker brush. There's a Stanley GT with a peerless with a peerless 820 in it. I've got one, two, three MTD chassis also. I've got a Cub Cadet that's down next to the pond that blew up a transmission. I've got a running Cub Cadet that um, I've got a Cub Cadet with a motor that I need to go and fix the motor in order to go and pull the transmission out of sitting over on the side. And I've got a small little old 1970s type tractor stuffed off in the pucker brush. And I've got not the norm and I've got the hydro build. And yeah, so 15. I think the answer is 15 right now. Might be 16, give or take. But I think it's 15 right now. All right, let's see. What do we got going on? Will you make a diesel-powered mud mower? Maybe. I the diesel the diesel thing just doesn't appeal to me. Um I get why it is people like it. I just, I like gas. I, I, I just am a gas guy. I've never been a diesel fan. Um, it's just not my thing. Just like I tell everybody, there's a reason why it is you won't see chainsaw videos on my channel other than, hey, I bought this chainsaw. Some people, they speak chainsaw. Some people don't. Me, I don't speak chainsaw. I got a buddy. He's good with chainsaws. My chainsaw goes to see him. His lawn tractors come to see me. I'm cool with that. Let's see. Will you put two rear ends on a mower to make a four by six mower? Probably not. Um, it's been done. The Murray Gator was my favorite that was done that way. Um, you should go check that out. The Murray Gator went through a lot of different revisions, and he definitely built that thing just as bad as you possibly could. Um, bad is in good bad, not bad is in bad bad. I want to be clear about that because I actually really like the build. Um, so go check that out. Look up Murray Gator, and you'll find all kinds of information on it. He ran into a lot of interesting problems while he was doing the build, and that might give you some things to think about. Is Maine cheap to live? No. No, actually, it's one of the highest cost states to go and live in, and as far as being a YouTuber in the state of Maine, it's actually kind of worse. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why it is Maine just kills you. Upkeep and cost of doing everything, I mean... 25-year guarantee paint doesn't last 25 years up here. It lasts about 15, just to put everything in perspective. A lot of times your roof warranties up here in the state of Maine are only 15 years, where everywhere else they're 25 to 30. Um, just keep that in mind. That's winter. Winter tears everything apart, and it makes the cost of living so much more expensive. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Thanks for the praises and the support and stuff. It really does help. Um, yeah, there's no reason to go and get down and dreary and mopey and everything else. I mean, why? It doesn't do you any good. So I try and keep it positive. And the other thing is, is I do have depression problems. I, I will totally admit that I get depressed and stuff like that. And I have a hard time moving on. But then I start seeing comments coming in from you guys or... I get on my phone and I find a picture of John totally happy as can be, or, you know, Jesse, my roommate will come by and give me a shove in the shoulder and tell me to keep moving, something like that. You know, remember who it is supports you, you know, give them a big hug, tell them the fact that they're doing everything right and that they're helping you. And, you know, it's a really big thing. You guys have no idea how much you help me every day just deciding to go and kick in a comment or two. 
So I really appreciate that. And a big thank you to all of you. Hey, from Northern Ireland. There we go. We got the Irish in here. Maybe that means we'll have some luck of the Irish when we get some motors up and running. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> I like your computer background. Yeah, that's that's the Furby. That's the Furby checking out spark plugs. Um, the Furbies have been on the channels for a long time. They actually started as a uh, they started as a dare from a fellow YouTuber that I used to go and work with, and they just stuck. I actually ended up finding a lot of the Furbies while I was running around. I have no idea what in the world people were doing with them or why they were everywhere. But I have found the Furbies in some really awkward locations, but I'm going to have to clean them up. They're just, yeah. Yeah, they either smell or they get interesting, yeah, liquids on them. West West Mexican tacos versus authentic tacos, which do you prefer? Oh, authentic tacos, definitely. Definitely. I I'm one of those people who always orders everything just as hot as they'll make it. I mean, Chinese food, whenever they talk about talk about the oh, do you want spicy level one to five? I go six every time. You should make a homemade loader for your mower. I've got some ideas actually. I ended up with I ended up with 12 linear actuators from medical beds. They're rated for 350 pounds, I think, or 250 pounds or something like that. And linear actuator controllers have actually really dropped in price, like really dropped in price. So I've actually debated trying to make a linear actuator loader. And then that way we can take the linear actuator. We can upgrade it to hydraulics later just to see the difference and work through it. Maybe one of those, you know, if you get this for free, you can build this in order to upgrade to this later. What do you guys think? Would that be cool? Have you ever been to River Bend Campground in Leeds, Maine? Let me answer your question. Have I ever been to that campground? Yes. Do I remember going to that campground? No. I was probably somewhere around 8 to 10 years old when I went. So, yes, I've been there. But, no, I don't remember, and I'm sorry. Now we got Luck of the Irish coming in. Wicked good. Great. Now I want lucky, lucky Charms. You see what you did there? You're a horrible person. I now need Lucky Charms. Let's see. Old School Shop says I'm back. What did I miss? Well, you see, I did the Macarena while playing a kazoo. Well... Balancing this ginger ale on my head, you're going to have to scroll back and go find it. I'm sorry. What was or is your favorite project? The original gas powered power wheel was definitely probably my favorite project that I've done as far as building it. Building it was definitely one of the most fun projects. As far as the most fun project, got burps in it. Um, as far as the most fun project to drive, the Mud Wizard most definitely is the most fun that I that I have built so far. Um, the actuating front end totally is a game changer on being able to go do stuff. That ladder bar suspension that I stole from Ford is absolutely, totally game changer. I can't wait to rock that thing around. And I did manage to find my GoPro. It's scratched up for some, you know, 
reason, but I did find it. So we should be able to go and get that hooked up and put onto the back of the mud wizard and we should be able to go play some more. You should make a track at your new land. That's the goal. Actually, what I'd really love to do is find about, I'd love to find something like about 20 acres. Somewhere in that 20 acre ballpark would be good. I'd like to have about two or three acres dedicated to the house and having a nice presentable lawn, um, having a nice presentable area. And then having Outback in order to do whatever I want to be able to do my extreme YouTube stuff. I mean, I don't just want to do mud mowers. I want to get into trucks. I want to get into everything. If it's got a motor, I want to play with it. I, I get, I love the mud mower stuff, but I want to get into bigger stuff. I want to get into project trucks. I want to get into project builds. I want to get into junkyard engine swaps and stuff like that. I've got a whole slew of different things I intend to do. <clears throat> Lucky Charms is a good dessert. You know what Lucky Charms is really good as? As Rice Krispie treats made out of Lucky Charms. That's awesome. Rice Krispie treats made out of Lucky Charms is totally on a whole different level. Everybody needs to try that. That's my that's my recommended weekly. You need to try that. All right, let's see. Let's scroll down through here. Yeah. Used to live in Farmingdale and check out the old forts. Yeah, the old forts around Maine are actually really cool. There's a whole bunch of them. I think there's eight, eight, maybe nine. If you get a chance, if you're ever up this way, um, just up past where I live, up on Route 1, there's a place called Fort Knox. Fort Knox is absolutely totally worth checking out. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're 60 years old or six months old. Fort Knox is worth going to see. Um, if you've got little kids, they have a whole section that they do that the kids can walk through and see all the old stuff. There's cannons you can take pictures on. There's portals that you can go and set the kids up in and take awesome family photos and stuff like that. They do a Halloween party every year. They do walkthroughs, they do demonstrations, they do all the musket stuff. Um, Fort Knox, if you're ever up this way, go check out Fort Knox. Um, on a side note, if you're ever up this way and you need a couple of ideas on something to go see, feel free to hit me up. Um, on Facebook, you can send me messages through the Redneck Computer Geek page, or you can send me a message to my uh, email. I check my email at least twice a day, and I check the Facebook message profile through the Redneck Computer Geek page, usually probably three times a day, now that I'm back on grid and I'm able to go and get to it again. So if you're ever coming up through this area, please feel free to go and send me a message and I'll send you a couple of ideas. Oh, uh, Let's see. How far is the cabin away from your house? See, the problem is here in Maine, we measure everything by driving distance. We don't measure it by miles. So I actually can't answer your question in miles. I can tell you that it's about a 35 minute drive away from my house, but that really doesn't help you. Will we see Donovan again in any videos? Donovan actually is John's stepbrother from another father. So he's not technically my son. And he has chosen to stay with Donovan's biological, uh, with John's bio biological mother. So he doesn't end up showing up on the channel anymore. 
I wish him best of luck. I absolutely, I do miss him and I hope he's doing well and I hope he's doing great in life. But Donovan doesn't show up on the channel anymore because he stays with her. Am I from Belfast, Maine? Yes, I'm born, raised, and live in. Thunderhole also is a cool spot. Yes, uh, Thunderhole is actually really cool. Um, little side note on Thunderhole, the real trick to Thunderhole, and you need to get a hold of like a ranger or somebody who knows the area, but the real trick to Thunderhole is watching for an inland rushing storm because it drives the waves up through Thunderhole. And instead of being like a 10 foot, um, instead of being, instead of being like a 10 foot spout, it's like 30 and it's a huge difference. Totally worth going to see the, the key with thunder hole is you got to go during a thunderstorm and you got to go during high tide. Carts and cameras, how far away are you from New Hampshire? Uh, carts and cameras, if you're in New Hampshire, type in Belfast, B-E-L-F-A-S-T, Maine, M-A-I-N-E, on Google Maps and check it out. Uh, the problem with going to New Hampshire is that I'm about an hour away from I-95, so I actually kind of have to go up and then go down to be able to go there. So you have to go up Route 3 and then down I-95. So New Hampshire would probably be about, probably a six hour drive, I would bet, from where I live. I don't know, check it out on Google Maps. But if, if you're going from wherever you're talking about to Belfast, Maine is where I live. Um, and make sure you're taking Route 3 down through to Belfast, not any of the other routes. Google Maps has been really re stupid in the state of Maine as far as mapping. I've had it take me down some really, really boondock roads in the last two years that it never would have taken me on in the past. So, guys, I'm going to give you like a couple minute warning here. I've got to go and get off of here because I've got to be somewhere at 730. Um, we're going to go a couple more minutes and call it good. Have you thought about making some of your creations radio controlled? It would be fun to get together if we were closer to each other. Yes, actually, um, I do have a lot of ideas for radio control. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I used to be a really, really obsessed radio control kid when I was younger. I grew up really poor, and so... When I was really poor growing up, what I used to do is I actually used to go to yard sales and I used to find as many of the RC cars as I could that were broken. And then I used to make these maniacal machines out of all the random RC car parts that I could find. But it's also how I ended up getting into rechargeable batteries and stuff like that. Like I used to make my own battery packs before the internet blew up. And people started making battery packs. Um, that's how long I've been into modding stuff of that nature. But have you ever used a engine shaft adapter for a pulley? I'm assuming you mean a three quarter inch to a one inch adapter. I wouldn't recommend it. That's going to be a lot of shock force on a very small area. And also, they're not rated for the horsepower past about, I think their horsepower rating is only up until about six horsepower, if I remember right, because they're meant to be adapters for Predator engines. And so I really wouldn't do anything past that. What's your best engine on the ride on a single or a twin engine? Here's my two cents. I like 
a single myself when I'm riding. And the reason being is because a single, you can hear the cycle of the exhaust. You can hear the note. You can hear the amount of torque you're putting on it. You can hear all of that stuff and you can vary your throttle accordingly. When you've got a twin, it tends to mix the notes. And especially if it's coming down into a single header, if it's dual exhaust, you can hear the firing. But if it comes down into a single header, it mixes the notes. You can't hear it as well. And I like that throttle control response that you get out of a single. Um, twins are just different in the way that they, they drive. I have had twin cylinder projects. Um, actually, if you look, I've had three. I've had three different twin cylinder projects. I've always ended up running single cylinders in all of the mud mowers because of the fact I like the sound and I like the way they throttled better. All right, so I gotta get everything signed off. I think this is awesome. We actually hit a, 109 people. Um, that's the highest I think we've ever had a live chat is 109 people. So thank you, everybody. I'm sorry for the four or five questions I didn't get a chance to get into. And we'll catch up with you again. I think what we're going to aim for is doing this about every two weeks and go from there. If, if any of you think that's a great idea, feel free to get on to the uh, community side and post up on one of the photos or something, whatever the recent one is right now, and go from there. Um, but otherwise than that, yeah, we'll go from there. Have fun, everyone.